Be Attentive, Series 7, Volume 19, March 28, 1926. The human life in my will was to be symbolized by the sun. Everyone can take its light, as much as they want of it, without anyone lacking it. However, as man withdrew from my will, the goods, the light, the strength, the love, the beauty, remained divided and as though halved among creatures. Therefore there was no more order, nor harmony, nor true love, either toward God or among themselves. Oh, if the sun could be divided into many rays, these solar rays, detaching from the center of light, would end up becoming darkness. And what would happen to the earth? Ah, indeed, no one could ever again have a light of his own, and all for himself. So it was with my will. By withdrawing from it, man lost the fullness of goods, the fullness of light, of strength, of beauty, and so forth and therefore he was forced to live a life of hardships. Therefore be attentive. Let your living in my will be continuous, that you may contain everything, and I may find everything in you. Did I not call and choose my mamma while being in my celestial fatherland? In the same way I have called and chosen you for the longed-for fiat, with the same power which no one can resist. Even more, I tell you, that in order to obtain this, you have at your disposal greater and more important things than my beloved mamma did. Therefore you are more fortunate, because she did not have a mamma, nor her works as help, in order to obtain the longed-for redeemer. But she had only the cortege of the Acts of the Prophets, the Patriarchs, and the good of the Old Testament, and of the great foreseen goods of the future Redeemer. You, on the other hand, have a mamma, and all of her works as help. You have the helps, the pains, the prayers, and the very life, not foreseen, but carried out of your Redeemer. There are no goods nor prayers that have been done and are being done in the church which are not with you to help you to obtain the longed-for fiat. Since the primary purpose of all that was done by me, by the Queen of Heaven, and by all the good, was the fulfillment of my will, everything is with you to impetrate the realization of their purpose. Therefore be attentive. I will always be with you, and so will my mamma. You will not be alone in longing for the triumph of our will. Volume 19, April 4th, 1926 Just as I am one single act, which after it is done once is done forever, Creation also was to be one single act. And just as in creation, my single act continues by preserving it ever new, whole, and fresh, so is my creating in souls continuous. I never stop. I am always, always in the act of forming more beautiful things, surprising and new things unless I find souls who close the doors to me and arrest my continuous act of creation. Then I find another device. I abound. I multiply my continuous act in the souls who keep the doors open, and with them I delight and continue the office of Creator. But do you know where this continuous act of mine is never interrupted? In the soul who lives in my will. Ah, yes, only in her can I do freely whatever I want, because my will, which the soul contains, prepares her for me to receive my fiat that came out in creation. 
So my will, possessed by the soul, and that which I myself keep, extend hands to each other, kiss each other, and form the greatest portents. Therefore be always attentive, and let your flight be always in my will. Volume 19, May 10, 1926 Oh, if the sun could form with the reflection of its light as many other suns on each plant, in the seas, on the mountains, in the valleys, what more beautiful enchantment, what beauty more radiant, how many more prodigies would there not be in the order of nature? Yet what the sun does not do, my will does in the soul who lives in it, and who remains with her mouth open like a little flower, in order to receive the sips of light which my will gives her, to form the life of the divine sun within her. Therefore be attentive. Take in every instant these sips of light of my will, that it may accomplish in you the greatest of prodigies, that my will may have its divine life in the creature. Volume 19, May 13, 1926 My daughter, your confessor has found great things before me, because when he would undertake an office, a commitment, he would neglect nothing so as to fulfill that office exactly. He was most attentive. He would make great sacrifices, and if necessary, he would even dispose himself to lay down his own life so that his office might be fulfilled exactly. He had a fear that, if he did not operate as befitted his office in the works entrusted to him, he himself might be an obstacle to the very work entrusted to him. This means that he appreciated and gave the right value to my works, and his attentiveness attracted the grace which was needed for the fulfillment of his office. This may not appear to be such a great thing, but rather it is everything. In fact, when one is called to an office and fulfills the duties pertaining to that office, it means that he does it for God. And in the fulfillment of one's duty, there is sanctity. So he came before me with the fulfillment of his own duties, which had been entrusted to him. How could I not reward him as he deserved? Now while Jesus was saying this, the confessor seemed to become more engrossed in more profound recollection, and the light of Jesus was reflected on his face. But he did not say even one word to me. Then Jesus resumed his speaking. My daughter, when an individual occupies an office and makes a mistake, or he is not attentive to the duties which his office demands, he may cause great troubles. Imagine one who has the office of judge, of king, of minister, or of mayor. If he makes a mistake, or is not attentive to his own duties, he may cause the ruin of families, of towns, and even of entire kingdoms. If that mistake, if that lack of attention came from a private individual who does not occupy that given office, it would not cause so much trouble. Therefore, faults in offices weigh more heavily and cause graver consequences. So when I call a confessor to give him an office, and in this office I entrust to him a work of mine, if I do not see attention and the fulfillment of his duties pertaining to that office, I give him neither the necessary grace nor enough light to make him comprehend all the importance of my work. Nor can I trust him, because I see that he does not appreciate the work entrusted to him by me. My daughter, if one carries out his office exactly, it means that he does it to fulfill my will. But if one does otherwise, it means that he does it for human purposes. And if you knew the difference between the two. Volume 20, 
Volume 19, May 18, 1926 At that moment, I saw other souls around me. Jesus went to them, and checking them all, he seemed to touch them, to see whether at his touch the motion of his divine life would come out. But nothing came out. Then he came back to me, and taking my hand, he squeezed it tightly. At his touch, a light came out of me, and Jesus, all content, told me, This light is the motion of the divine life in you. I went to the other creatures, as you saw, but I did not find my motion. How, then, can I entrust the great capital of my will? This is why I have chosen you, and that is enough. Be attentive, and do not fear. Volume 19, May 31st, 1926 Now while Jesus was saying this, the doubt came to me about whether the three divine persons had suffered, all three of them, or the word alone. And Jesus resumed his speaking, saying, My daughter, because they are inseparable from me, the Father and the Holy Spirit descended with me, and I remained with them in the heavens. But the task of satisfying, of suffering, and of redeeming man was taken by me. I, son of the Father, took on the role of reconciling God with man, our divinity was untouchable by the suffering of the slightest pain. It was my humanity that, united with the three divine persons in an inseparable way, placing itself at the mercy of the divinity, suffered unheard of pains, and satisfied in a divine manner. And since my humanity possessed not only the fullness of my will as its own virtue, but the Word Himself, as well as the Father and the Holy Spirit as a consequence of our inseparability, it surpassed in a more perfect way both innocent Adam and my very Mama. In fact, in them it was grace. In me it was nature. They had to draw light, grace, power, beauty from God. In me, there was the springing font of light, beauty, grace, and so forth. So the difference between me as nature and my very mamma as grace was so great that she remained eclipsed before my humanity. Therefore, my daughter, be attentive. Your Jesus possesses the springing font and has always something to give you and you have always something to take. As much as I may tell you about my will, I have always something to tell you, and neither the short life of the exile nor the whole eternity will be enough to make known to you the long story of my supreme will and to enumerate for you the great prodigies contained in it. Volume 19, June 6, 1926 Jesus, my love, the more you tell me, the more I feel the weight of my littleness, and I fear that I might be an obstacle to the kingdom of your will on earth. Oh, if you and my mamma had done this directly, while being on earth, your will would have had its full effect. And Jesus, interrupting my speaking, added, My daughter, our task was perfectly accomplished. Now, you, be attentive on accomplishing your own. This is your task, more so since the Sovereign Queen and I are untouchable by pains. We are in the state of impassivity and of complete glory, and therefore pains can no longer have anything to do with us. You, on the contrary, have the pains as help to impetrate the supreme fiat, new knowledges, new graces, 
and even though I am in heaven, I will be hidden in you to form the kingdom for my will. My power is always the same. While being in heaven, I can do what I would have done while being visible on earth. When I want it, and the creature lends herself, giving all of herself prey to my will, I invest her and make her do what I myself should do. Therefore be attentive and mind your own task. Volume 19, June 15, 1926 Knowledge will give life to the fruits of my will. This is why I wanted to renew what I did in redemption, choosing another virgin, remaining hidden with her for forty years and more, segregating her from everyone, as if in a new Nazareth, to be free with her to tell the whole story, the prodigies, and the goods contained in it, so as to be able to form the life of my will in you. And just as I chose St. Joseph to be together with me and my mamma, as our cooperator, tutor, and vigilant sentry for me and for the Sovereign Queen, in the same way I have placed near you the vigilant assistance of my ministers, as cooperators, tutors, and depositories of the knowledges, goods, and prodigies contained in my will. And since my will wants to establish its kingdom in the midst of peoples, through you I want to deposit this celestial doctrine in my ministers as my new apostles, so that first I may form with them the link of connection with my will, and then they may transmit it into the midst of peoples. If it were not so, or were not to be so, I would not have insisted so much on having you write, nor would I have permitted the daily coming of the priest, but I would have left all my work between me and you. Therefore be attentive, and leave me free to do what I want in you. Volume 19, June twentieth, 1926 See, all have their ideal, and when they realize it, only then are they content. The little baby also had his ideal, to attach himself to the breast of his mamma. And while he cries and sobs, as soon as his mamma opens her lap to him, the baby stops crying, takes on a smile, and flinging himself, he attaches himself to the breast of his mamma, and victorious he suckles and suckles until he is full. And while he suckles, triumphant, he takes his sweet sleep. So I am. After long crying, when I see the lap of a soul who opens the doors to me, to give place to the kingdom of my will, my tears stop. And flinging myself onto her lap, I attach myself to her, and suckling her love and the fruits of the kingdom of my will, I take my sweet sleep, and I rest victorious. Even the tiny little bird, its ideal is the seed, and when it sees it, it beats its wings, it runs, hurls itself over the seed. Victorious, it grabs it with its beak, and triumphant, it continues its flight. So I am. I fly and fly. I make my round, and make my round to form the kingdom of my will in the soul, that she may form for me the seed to nourish me, because I use no other food but that which is formed in my kingdom. And when I see this celestial seed, more than little bird, I fly to make of it my food. So for each, everything is in realizing the ideal one has set for himself. And this is why when I see you operate in the kingdom of my will, I see my ideal realized, and I feel repaid for the work of creation and redemption, and the triumph of my will established in you. Therefore be attentive, and let the victory of your Jesus be permanent in you. 
Volume 19, June 26, 1926. But you must know that the one who possesses the kingdom of my will on earth has the right to universal glory in heaven, and this in a natural and simple way. My will embraces everything and involves everyone. So from the one who possesses it, come all goods along with the glory that these goods contain. And while universal glory comes from her, she also receives it. And do you think it is trivial to possess universal glory in the celestial fatherland? Therefore be attentive. The kingdom of the supreme will is immensely rich. There are coins that spring forth, so everyone expects something from you. And also my mamma wants the return for the universal love she had for all generations. And you, in return, are due universal glory in the celestial fatherland, the exclusive inheritance of the one who has possessed the kingdom of my will on earth. Volume 19, July 1st, 1926. Now, my daughter, does it not seem easier to you, more encouraging, more within the reach of the human nature, that after they have known the kingdom of redemption, in which the blind, the lame, and the sick can be healed, because the blind cannot enter the kingdom of my will, for in it all are straight and glowing with health, finding all possible means in the kingdom of redemption and the very passport of my passion and death in order to pass into the kingdom of my will, animated at the sight of such a great good, they will decide to take possession of it? Therefore be attentive, and do not want to constrain or reduce the goods which are in the kingdom of my will. And you do this when you do not manifest everything of what I make known to you, because knowledge is the bearer of the gift. And if now I abound in the knowledges about it, it is gifts that I make. And in these gifts, I establish the more or the less to be placed in the kingdom of my will for the good of those who are to possess it. Volume 19, July 2nd, 1926. My daughter, do not be surprised. By possessing the kingdom of the supreme will, the soul will possess a divine, infinite, eternal will which encloses all goods. And the one who possesses everything can give us everything. What will be our contentment, our happiness and his, in seeing the littleness of the creature in this kingdom of ours, taking from us continuously as the owner? as our true child. And since what he takes from us is divine, he takes the divine, and the divine he gives to us. He takes the infinite, and the infinite he gives to us. He takes immense things from us, and immense things he gives to us. He takes light from us, and light he brings to us. He will do nothing but take and give to us. We will place all our things at his disposal, so that in the kingdom of our will, given to him by us, nothing extraneous to us may enter any more, but only our own things, and we may receive the fruits, the glory, the love, the honor of the kingdom of our will. Therefore be attentive, and let your flight in our volition be continuous. Volume 19, July 8, 1926 Now, my daughter, just as the pains of the celestial queen and mine, as well as my death, like sun, made the fruits present in the kingdom of redemption mature, fecundate, and become sweet, in such a way that everyone can take them, and they are fruits which bring health to the sick and sanctity to the healthy. 
In the same way, your pains, grafted with ours, and matured with the heat of the sun of my will, will make the fruits present in the kingdom of my will mature. They will be so many and so sweet and delicious that whoever wants to take them and enjoy them will no longer adapt himself to the unripe, tasteless, and noxious fruits of the miserable and squalid kingdom of the human will. You must know that the one who must be the first to form a kingdom, to bring a good, to form a work, must suffer more than anyone, and do more than anyone. He must direct, facilitate things and means, and prepare what is needed, so that finding the raw materials of that work and seeing it done, others may imitate it. This is why much have I given you, and do give you, so that you may form the raw materials for those who must live in the kingdom of my will. Therefore be attentive and disposed to what I give you, and to do what I want from you. Volume 19, July 14, 1926 Creation is like a veil that hides my will, which is like a birth within it. But creatures take the veil and reject the birth present inside of it. The kingdom of my will is the sun, but while they take the effects of the sun, which, like veil, conceals my will and the goods it produces, they reject my will. They do not recognize it nor do they let themselves be dominated by it. So they take the natural goods present in the sun, but reject the goods of the soul, the kingdom of my will that reigns in the sun and wants to give itself to them. Oh, how my will agonizes in the sun, wanting to give birth from the height of its sphere in order to reign in the midst of creatures. The kingdom of my will is the sky, looking at the creatures with its eyes of light, which are the stars, to see if they want to receive it, so that it may reign in their midst. The kingdom of my will is the sea. It makes itself heard with its roaring waves, and its waters hide it like a veil. But man makes use of the sea, he takes its fish, but does not bother about my will, and causes it to agonize, like a birth constrained in the womb of the waters. So all the elements are pregnant with my will, the wind, the fire, the flower, the whole earth. They are all veils that conceal it. Now who will give this outlet and relief to my humanity? Who will break these veils of so many created things that conceal it? The one who will recognize in all things the bearers of my will, and paying the honors due to it, will let it reign in her soul, giving it dominion and her subjection. Therefore, my daughter, be attentive. Give this contentment to your Jesus, who has agonized so much until now to release this birth of my supreme kingdom, and to gather with me the whole creation as a single act will break the veils and will deposit in you the birth of my will that all things conceal. You have reached the end of the Be Attentive series Volume 19, Part 2 Fiat 